Hello, I'm doing this video because I need your help. I'm running the London Marathon on October the 3rd. I'm running in aid of youth and mental health. It's a serious challenge and we need to do something to tackle it. I have committed to raising £3,000 and this is where you come in. Uh, whether you can donate £2, £5, £10, £50, £100, whatever you can do, uh, every amount helps towards this great cause. Um, the more you donate, the more I get motivated, the more I'm inspired. Uh, I, I'll be running anyway, uh, but there's nothing wrong with a little motivation. And so thank you in advance for your help and your support. If you can't donate, that's totally okay. Uh, but I will keep you guys uh, informed of my progress via my WhatsApp status. Click the link to donate. Um, I just want to have our opening prayer. So if we could um, bow our heads for our opening prayer, please. Most kind and everlasting Father, what a privilege to just be allowed to pray for our, our team, our church, Lord. And as we're about to go into as we're about to go into our service, Lord, I pray that you'll be with the service. You'll help us to have a good service and be able to be focused on you. Lord, we be with the person who's about to break the bread, Elder Cheryl Harris. Help her to, to give your message. And Lord, there's so much things going on around the world. We have so much problems and so much issues. You know, the sick, and uh, we're grateful for people who have recovered from COVID. And, and as we're getting our journey to heaven, as the lesson points to, help us to be focusing on you and not to be panicking or as we think of the panic buying situation and the gas prices and, and so on. Help us to have that courage and boldness in you, in you, Christ. Be with our marriages, our relationships, and help us to be obedient in all that we do. Um, bless us in all we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. A special welcome to each of you joining us on Zoom and on YouTube. I pray that as we worship together, that God's presence and peace is upon us today. May God's word bless us as and enjoy the rest of your day. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. Today's scripture reading will be taken from Acts chapter 16, verse 20, verses 25 to 34. Acts chapter 16, verses 25 to 34. And at, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the, band, the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been, had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell and, and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized. And he and all his straight away. And when he had brought them into his house, he set me before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Good morning, boys and girls. It's lovely to see you today. 
Now, our children's story today takes place in the jungle. I need your help with a few animal sounds. So firstly, if you can unmute your mics, we're going to practice some animal sounds. The first sound is the sound of a lion. Now, after three, I want to hear your best lion roar. Are you ready? One, two, three. I didn't hear anyone. Okay. Well, Hazel's doing some, um, some sound tracks for us in the background. Okay, next, boys and girls. See if you can give me your best elephant sound after three. One, two, three. Okay, the last one now is a giraffe. Now we're going to stretch our necks like giraffes and we're going to make the sound as if a giraffe is eating and stretching our necks. Great. Now the very last sound, it's not an animal sound, but I need you to give me your best laugh. Imagine somebody's tickling you. So parents, you may need to tickle your little ones to get them to laugh. Is that okay? So unmute your mics and let me hear your best laugh. After three, one, two, Three. <laughs> <Is> that your laugh? <laughs> that okay, so let's begin. With As I said, our story takes place in the jungle, and it was late at night, and all the animals were fast asleep. But then there was a loud Bang. And it woke up the animals. The animals woke up and started to search the jungle to see what had made this loud noise. Eventually, they got to a spot where they saw a star. It was lying on the ground. It had fallen from the sky. Now the king of the jungle, the lion, he said, I'm the king of the jungle. And he gave a Big roar. Let's hear your roars, everyone. Excellent. Just like that. And he said, I'm going to pick up the star. So Lion bent down, picked up the star in his paw, and he reached it as far as he could go. But he could only reach just above his head. Now, boys and girls, was that high enough to put the star back in the sky? No, it wasn't. So lion put the star back down. Next, elephant. Let's hear your loudest elephant sound. Okay. Excellent. Elephant said, I'm going to pick up the star because I have a long trunk. So elephant scooped up the star in his trunk and raised it as high as he could. But Elephant could only stretch the star just above his head. Boys and girls, was that high enough to put the star back in the sky? No, it wasn't. Next was the giraffe. He thought because he had a long neck, he could stretch the star way up in the sky. So let's stretch our necks, boys and girls. And so, Giraffe put the star, raised it as high as he could, but he only reached just above the treetops. And boys and girls, was that high enough to put the star in the sky? No, it wasn't. Oh dear, all the animals didn't know what to do. But just then, little ant started to jump up and down. I can do it, I can do it, he said. I can put the star back in the sky. And all the animals started to laugh. Give me your best laugh, boys and girls. <laughs> Excellent. They started to laugh at little Ant, saying, you can't do it. You're too small. You're too tiny. You're too little. But little Ant was determined to have a try at putting the star back in the sky. All right then, said Lion, you can have a turn. So little ants scurried away 
and not too long after, he came scurrying back. But he wasn't by himself. There was a whole army of ants behind him, and they were all marching along. Now, these ants were very smart. They knew exactly what to do. So the first ants got into position, stood very still. Then the second ant came and climbed up the back of the first ant and stood still. Then the third ant came, climbed up the backs of the first two ants and stood still. And so on and so on, the ants went until there was a tall, tall tower of ants going way up into the midnight sky. Now, the last little ant picked up the star, climbed up the backs of all the other ants, and when he got to the top, he popped the star back in the midnight sky. And the star was able to shine again all night. Now, boys and girls, there are two lessons I want you to take away from the story today. The first lesson is you are never too small, too tiny, or too young to do something great for Jesus. Jesus can use you today, just as you are, to bring glory to his name. And the second lesson is, you might be good at something all by yourself, but it would be even better if you worked in a team. And the Bible encourages us to work together in a team for the faith. The church is made up of different parts, different bodies. Everybody has a different part to play. And God wants us all to do our part in the church. And every part is just as important as the other. So just a last demonstration on teamwork. I'm going to ask Sophia to give us her loudest lion's roar. Come, Sophia. We did practice this and she was fine. Now she's gone shy. Okay, Hazel, give us your loudest lion's roar. Go. Roar! All right, that was good. I'm sure if we all unmute our mics and we all gave a big roar, it would sound so much better. So adults, children, everyone, unmute your mic. And after three, I want to hear everybody give the loudest roar they can. Okay. One, two, three. three. That was excellent. Teamwork is the best. Okay. Would anybody like to pray to close? Just go ahead and unmute your mic. Okay, if not, I will pray to close. Okay, let's pray. Hands together, eyes closed. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the children that we have in our church. We pray especially for them, dear Lord, that as they grow, they will know that they are never too little or too young to do anything for you. And even at this young age, you can use them. And help us, Lord, as a church body to work together to spread the gospel. Help us to be united in all that we do. And we ask, Lord, for your blessing upon each and every one of us here today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls and adults. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. I really pray that you had a good week. And if you didn't, we thank him for his grace that we're still here. Um, it could have been many different ways by the end of this week, but we're still here. And we're in a position to praise him and to worship him. So we're just going to sing some songs directly to him today. We're going to sing about his greatness and then we're going to sing about his love. And then we're going to just sing about the sacrifice that he paid and how we fit into all of that as well. So I pray that as we sing, I notice I said we sing, that even though I can't hear you, that we worship together. We worship the king and we lift our voices to, to the one that deserves it all. So we're going to just start with a song that I know you know really well or like you to know really well. It just says, how great is our God? And it says, sing with me, how great is our God. And I really hope that we sing together and we worship him. So let's sing, how great is our God. The splendor of the King Hold your majesty Let all the earth rejoice Let all the earth rejoice He wraps himself around And darkness tries to hide And trembles 
song we will sing is hymn number 526 because he lives
this is the space for ties and offer. I want to thank you, Coms. I just give a few minutes for, for those online to take the notes before I speak. Okay, after happy Sabbath, everyone. This is the sport for ties and offer, as you see. Uh, the tie is going for the conference and uh, often going for local shares. As we give, I just want to explain for those who just in for the first time, when you send your money to account, if you can email to the treasurer and break down and explain what's the, your ties and why your offer, that help the treasurer to allocate where you want to give to conference or give to a lot of shares. I want to thank you for listening and for being part of the platform today. Happy Sabbath to everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath faster. Happy yeah, Sabbath. Sarah there. Oh, happy Sabbath, Kara. Today, it gives me privilege to actually welcome someone who's been dear to me. Having just arrived in Houston, Texas, in August, seems so long now, 2018, and I would be there for about 12 months away from my family, loved ones, the church. God led me to a church a church that was called, that is called Fondren. He was so great for me and to me because of the fact that I knew no one in Houston, no one, family member, absolutely no one was there. And it was, I was feeling rather alone, but God led me to, to, to Fondren. It was at the Fondren Seventh Adventist Church that I first met our speaker for today. Elder Cheryl Harris and her lovely family. She's born in London. She's a Londoner, even though she's been away for such a long time, she's still a Londoner. She migrated to Montreal, Canada at the age of five. Presently, she's living in Missouri City in Texas. She works as a music specialist at an intermediate school in Houston. Elder Harris attends the, the Fondren Seventh-day Adventist Church, where she is the first elder. Fondren Seventh-day Adventist Church, a worship center, a great place, contemporary worship. She is married to Dr. Howard Harris. He's a former director of jazz studies at Texas Southern University. And together they have one lovely son, Austin, who just recently entered the working field as a music instructor. So music is in their blood. One of her favorite scriptures, he says, is trust in the Lord, pour out your heart before him, and God is a refuge for us. She's one of the outstanding elders at the Fondren Seventh-day Adventist Church. Myself and my family can speak of Cheryl. Her compassion, her care, her looking out for, for us, we were well catered for. And I never forget those many Sabbath gatherings where we came into contact with the rest of the church family. She and her family have welcomed my family as we traveled. She's warm, loving, kind. And today I wanna to welcome her to the pulpit of the Chiswick Seventh-day Adventist Church. And here I'm saying the word Chiswick Seventh-day Adventist Church. But before Elder speaks, we will be favored by a special item. Then the next voice you hear will be Elder Harris. May God bless us. Amen.
to all of my brothers and sisters at the Chiswick SDA Church in London, England from Missouri City, Texas. I almost got caught up with that beautiful praise song. I need to look for that. That is such a beautiful song of meditation to take us just to where we need to be today in a place of worship. I wish to thank your pastor, Dr. Steve Thomas, for the invitation to worship with you and to share a word of encouragement to keep us growing in the faith and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. I thank him also for the opportunity to worship and not just worship, but to minister again in my home country. You know, the first time I ministered in, in London, England was at the Regent, Regent, Regent Street Church at the age of four. And I sang the song, Two Little Eyes to Look to God. That is still vivid in my memory. You know, while your pastor was studying and working in Texas, he became a very integral part of the Fondren congregation, as well as a friend to many, especially to my family. We've seen that God's grace truly shines through him, as it's also evident in his family, his beautiful wife, Lurleen, and their daughters and their son-in-law. You know, we can all agree that Sabbath is a time where we can come aside from the challenges and the concerns of the week and spend quality time with God and with other believers. And if you don't mind, I'd like to welcome into fellowship this morning. Uh, fellowshipping with us this morning is my aunt, Winnie Charles, and her daughter, Monica, members of the Walthamstow SDA Church. My prayer today is that God will bless our worship time together and that someone will find their healing. Someone will find their breakthrough. Someone will find added strength to go on the extra mile. Although we all have our own individual trials, 
We all look to the same God, the true God, the one true God who never fails. Our trust in him allows us to build up resilience and a stronger dependence on him. I wonder if you would join me right now in praising our God who is omnipotent, he is omnipresent, and he is forever faithful. Can you say praise the Lord? We worship you today, oh God. Hallelujah to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And you Amen. know, as now as we get into the word, you know, I'd like to thank the young lady who read the word so eloquently. Thank you so much. Acts 16, 25 to 34. And if you don't mind, I'd just like to repeat a couple of the verses, starting at verse 25 through 26, which reads, and at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. The title of our message is The Midnight Praise. Hallelujah. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, you are already with us. We feel your presence all around us and in us. The word says where there's two or three gathering, you are here. Speak to us, oh God, as the, as the only way that you can, individually and corporately, as you get us ready for heaven. Take away our sins. Keep our eyes on you and bless our time as we feast on the word today. In Jesus' name, we give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. Amen. Praise God. As we get into our message, I'd like to leave three points with you. Number one, negative and pressing circumstances cannot contain my praise. They only encourage me to lean more on Christ. Number two, someone needs to hear and may be blessed by my praise. That's point number two. So I'm not gonna stop praising God. And point number three, my worship to God changes the atmosphere to activate God's power. Now, how many of you have ever been in a situation where you knew that you were doing the right thing and yet you faced animosity? Or maybe you were in a situation where you were blamed or accused of something that you did not do. You are a law-abiding citizen. You're paying your taxes on time. You keep your house and your lawn looking really, really nice. You participate in and you support community projects. You're diligent to show up at work on time. Give your best and somehow you end up being victimized. Now, to be honest, this happens, especially in America, to minorities far too often. And to make matters worse, mm, our world seems to be in a downward spiral with attacks on moral values, attacks on law enforcement and the maintaining of safe communities. We also have to deal with rising inflation. I, I heard your, your announcements this morning, rising gas prices, precarious trade relations, critical and alarming foreign concerns, and unstable economic security. Now, how you respond to everything that is going on around you should mean everything. We are bombarded on every side, but we cannot, we dare not live without hope. Yeah. We must give ourselves permission to live victorious lives. Now, as we turn to the word for guidance, we will spend some time today in the book of Acts chapter 16. 
And this will lay the groundwork to show how injustice and discrimination have existed throughout history. Our scripture finds Paul and Silas in prison. Now for the next moment, let's, let's just find out how these two ended up there. Now, according to Acts 16, verse 16, the apostle Paul and Pastor Silas were doing missionary work in Philippi. They were responding to the call that Paul had in a vision to come over to Macedonia. Now, just for reference, the city of, of Philippi is in Macedonia. So after converting Lydia and her household to becoming followers, Paul and Silas spent some more time in the city. Now, one day as they were going to the temple to pray, a certain demon-possessed slave girl began following them while announcing who they were. These men are servants of the Most High God uh, uh, who uh, proclaim to us the way of salvation. By making this proclamation over and over as she followed them for many days, she was financially empowering her masters as a fortune teller. Now, why Paul and Silas allowed this to happen for as long as they did is a wonder. But at some point, Paul became greatly annoyed and commanded the evil spirit to come out of her. Right then and there, the Holy Ghost power invested in Pastor Paul. Fortune telling days for this slave girl was over. Now, what happened next is a perfect example of the question that is still on the table. Why do bad things happen to good people? Mm. Apparently, since the slave girl could no longer bring income to her masters, Paul and Silas found themselves being dragged before the authorities with fabricated charges. And as we all know, as long as we pull out the race card, emotions are going to fly. Mm -hmm. The citizens dredged up some charges that went like this. Paul and Silas, otherwise known as these Jews, are teaching customs that are not lawful for us Romans. That was all the multitude needed to hear to get agitated and put a beating on these two preachers with rods. Mm -hmm. But God in his mercy allowed them to live through that terribly brutal experience. And when the beating was over, they were thrown into the, utter, into the inner prison. Now, just what is the inner prison? Come on. The inner prison was a place where the worst of criminals were kept and properly secured with their feet in stocks. Now, in my humble opinion, that enhanced measure was only to add more humiliation than was needed. How does one who has just received a beatdown pose a, a flight risk? Mm. Now, another question that usually pops up in the same interval as why do bad things happen to good people is the question, where was God? We've all heard the stories and our hearts are pricked each time we hear of tragic situations that inconceivably causes us to wonder, why God? We were all shocked to hear of the Allegheny East Conference president, Pastor Henry and Sister Fordham, who perished when their house caught on fire. And inside of us, we're asking the question, why God? We know that God is love. We know that God's words has promises that we should prosper and be in good health. And even when our health is challenged and we're scraping the barrel to put food on the table, our spiritual mantra is still that all things are working together for good to them yes. that love God. Yes. yes. And even when we're falsely accused and spitefully abused, treated unfairly or persecuted, all things are still working together for my good. And yet, deep inside of us, we still wonder, why are we in this predicament? You know, the same Bible that tells us to trust in God the same God that is a covenant keeper and keeps all of his promises also declares that false witnesses will rise up against me and the wicked may come up against me to eat my flesh. Yet we cannot help but ask 
the question, why? Yeah. A minister who is deep in spiritual insight and wisdom once said, God has many ways of saving his children. Oh, yes. He knows those that will not be able to endure the trouble sometimes. God knows those who are ready. So yeah. what may seem like a tragedy to us? And believe you me, God also shares the pain that his children bears is a way of sealing the destiny of his saints. Yeah. Revelation 14, 13 says, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Amen. There is absolutely nothing wrong with asking the question, God, why? And because he is God, it really doesn't matter how we ask. We may be depressed. We may be weak. We may be angry or on the verge of giving up. But God as our father or affectionately known by some of us as daddy God, he wants us to come to him, first of all, believing that he is. And no matter how small our faith is, we must believe that he is. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The word declares, if you seek me, you will find me. If you search for me with all of your heart. David also declares in Psalms 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Asking God why is just one more way of opening up our hearts to connect to the light of his word, his truth, and our salvation. Amen. Still in answer to the question why, we turn back to the two apostles filled with the Holy Ghost, bringing the good news of salvation to those who are recognizing their need for a savior and they end up being persecuted. Persecuted. Persecuted for righteousness sake. Ah, there it is. We're looking for answers and what better place to look than in the word of God. So now we have a connection and we're yeah. ready for lift up. Yeah. In Christ's Sermon on the Mount, this was one of the prophetic blessings. Matthew 5, 11 to 12 says, Blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For Amen. so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes. And that's where we find our two disciples. As believers of the word, they were on a different plane of existence. These two disciples had walked and they had talked with Jesus. And they were driven and excited to tell others about their God. Imagine with me as they sat with their feet in stocks in that cold, dark, smelly prison, what must have been going through their minds. They were weak. They were sore. They were blistering. They were bleeding without a promise of a hope for when they would be released to at least receive some treatment for their wounds. Maybe they even wondered, if we were following God's directions, why did we end up here? Like common criminals, how could this happen? We don't know how long this painful exchange of questions went on for, but at some point in time, there was a glimmer of light in the situation. Thank God for the Holy Spirit who promised us to be with us at all times until the end of time. Amen. And believe you me, he was right there beside them in that pitiful place. 
The realization must have dawned ever so slowly in the darkness of that cell, through their pain, in their suffering, through the agonizing discomfort that they were not alone, through the injustice and hopelessness of their situation, they were not alone. They had each other. Paul had Silas and Silas had Paul. Paul like Silas and Silas like Paul, they were preachers of righteousness. These two anointed brothers were devoted to sharing the hope of the gospel. And what was the driving power behind them sharing the gospel? It was the reality that the gospel was real to them. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow they knew that in this very dismal moment as gospel proclaimers, they better start proclaiming the gospel to themselves. <laughs> Paul may have said to Silas with a slight grunt because of the pain, mm, hey, my brother, do you remember how the wise man Solomon said, Two are better than one mm, because they have a good reward for their labor. And Saul may have responded with a tiny groan as he shifted his weight to respond. Mm, yeah, man, for if they fall, one will lift up his companion. Mm, but woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him. Although with weak voices at first, they began to speak stronger and stronger as they encouraged each other. Paul continued by speaking the words of Job in his suffering. Mm, you have granted me life and favor and your care has preserved my spirit. Mm. And right on cue, Silas declared the words of King David, do not mm, deliver me mm, to the will of my adversaries for false witnesses have risen against me and such as breathe out violence. Mm, mm. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord mm, in the yes. land of the yeah. living. Yeah. As the minutes ticked away, they began to fly. They began to fly as Paul and Silas broke the dour mood by repeating the promises of God. And just like fire shut up in their bones, as sunlight, as the sunlight struck midnight, a baritone voice changed the environmental atmosphere with a song. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And just as soon as one song had ended, another began, Mighty Rock, in a weary land, cooling shade on the burning sand, faithful guide for the pilgrim's band, a shelter in the time of storm. Come on. And it Amen. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything, everything, everything yeah. to God in prayer. And again, Silas' voice rang out, crown him with many crowns, the yeah. lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. And once again, this time, their voices in harmonious strain, rejoice, the Lord is king, your Lord and king adore. And so as the minutes ticked away, they sang and they sang and they sang. Those two beaten to a pulp preacher prisoners became so pumped up with singing their praises to God, all of the elements were affected. Even while the physical body was suffering, the inner man was still very much alive. Even in their physical suffering, Paul and Silas did not forget their purpose and praise God that they were found worthy to suffer for Christ's sake. Yes. And it probably never occurred to them that they were entertaining angels who mind you had probably folded their wings 
due to the energy of worship that filled that cell. Mm. It also didn't matter to Paul and Silas that there was a captive audience, pardon the pun, a makeshift congregation of sorts as every prisoner within earshot had tuned in to listen curiously to the two singing evangelists. As the praises to God continued, there ain't no rocks gonna cry out in my place attitude began to cause a dramatic shift in the atmosphere that had never happened before. Suddenly, without warning, the foundations of the prison were shaken. The rocks and the shifting tectonic place beneath the earth's surface, demanding to join into the worship, did the best thing they knew how to do. They started to move and slide and cry out as the earth shook so hard. It shook and it broke the chains of all Amen. Of clink after clink. After clink, after clink, the chains fell to the cold concrete floor. Joining the clinks and the clanks was the fierce rattling of metal bolts and bars as the prison doors broke loose and began to swing back and forth and back and forth with vigor. And as though stunned by the supernatural display of loose chains and open prison doors, even as the strains of the last note hung densely in the air. Not a single prisoner budged from his or her place of confinement. And Paul and Silas must have looked at each other and wondered, did we just do that? The violence of the earthquake gave freedom to all who were in confinement in the prison, and yet no one left. Hey, come on. Hey. Not even Paul and Silas, who technically had no business being there, but God wanted them there. And their God-ordained presence was a manifestation of all things working together for good in real time. They yeah. had created such an atmosphere of worship to their God, opening the way for someone to be saved. Now, although the Bible doesn't oh, yes. say this, in my sanctified mind, I believe that there were other converts in that jail in that jail that night beside the jailer and his family. The proof lies in the fact that not a single prisoner fled. There's no question that the impact of the whole experience must have had an effect of everyone within those prison walls. There is no doubt that this was a turning point in the lives of the undocumented witnesses. We just don't know how much. But someone else in those dark, cold jail cells must have realized that there was another brand of freedom beyond running free from a jail cell. Come there was on. another brand of freedom that was a saving encounter with the Lord and Savior who died to set them free from the shackles of sin. Amen. Someone else realized in their impoverished state that this supernatural event that they had just witnessed could only be the mighty workings of a supernatural God who delighted in the worship of the two beat Amen. of yeah. My, 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 my. Mm. Now, the only movement in that jail cell was the jail keeper, suddenly realizing that he had fallen asleep at his post and the prison doors were swinging open. And that could only mean one thing. A horrifying feeling began to rise up within him due to the realization that all of the prisoners had taken off. He scrambled for his sword to take his life, but it was not to be. The Apostle Paul, guided by the Holy Spirit's intuition, called out to him, do yourself no harm, for we are all here. In that very moment, 
Paul threw out the life-saving words that changed the trajectory of the jailkeeper's life. Yeah. No man was ever so glad to hear another man's voice. Verse 29, then he called for a light, ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Amen. The jailkeeper called for a light. That detail should not be overlooked. He called for a light. He was no longer satisfied with darkness. He desired light. He called for a light, just enough light for the situation. Little did he realize that he was about to receive more than he bargained for. Jesus Christ, by his confession, was to become his Lord and Savior. The jailkeeper called for a light, and he became acquainted with the light of the world. Yeah. Amen. My friends in Christ, you may never know at the time just who is ready to come to Christ. Your witness may influence people around you. And when they realize that you have something that they don't have, be just because of the way you are living, they will feel comfortable coming to you. I know that some of you have experienced that. You know what? You don't have to talk about God for people to know that you are godly. Amen. Remember the little song, Don't You Know, O Christian? Amen. That you are serving Amen. in shoes? Hmm. What if Paul and Silas, through their mistreatment, had exemplified a complaining and a contentious spirit? Oh, but no, 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 no. They were too charged up in the Holy Spirit. Anything like a little persecution stand in their way of praising and worshiping their God. Their imprisonment led to the salvation of an entire family. And the takeaway is that God does not waste our suffering as he is always working everything out for our good. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. And in that cold, dark, smelly, hopeless place, Paul and Silas proved those words true. Just like an on-duty nurse who knows the medical prognosis of their patients, I imagine that the jailkeeper knew the details as to why these, 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 these prisoners were in prison. Mm. He knew that Paul and Silas were missionaries. He knew that they were committed to pointing souls to Christ. But due to the nature of his duty, he may have never had an opportunity to speak with these political prisoners. Obviously, God in his omniscience knew something that no one else did, not even Paul and Silas. Although Paul would later pen the words from his experiences in Romans 8, 28, but you know, we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. Back to the question. Why do good, bad things happen to good people? According to the word, God is always working his purpose out. Just like Paul and Silas, we are encouraged that even in the midnight hour, we need to walk by faith and not by sight. Mm. Speaking of the midnight hour, I heard it said years ago that it's almost midnight in earth's dark history. Jesus is soon to come. And all I can say is that for the times that we are living in, it is even more evident that it is closer to midnight than ever before. But this should not take the Christian by surprise. When the disciples asked Jesus, what would be the signs of the end of the age and of the second coming, Jesus told them in Matthew 24, wars and rumors of wars. There is currently evidence of chemical warfare, physical warfare, biochemical warfare, check. Jesus said there, that nations would rise against nations. We can put a check mark there too. Famines and pestilences, check. Earthquakes in diverse places, check that one off also. 
Christians hated by all nations. We've heard about the persecution all around the world. Check. Deception and lawlessness will abound. Check, check, check. The love of many will grow cold. Check. How many of you, I'm sorry, have you ever seen a time like this when the word of God is so relevant? The word of God is so vivid. The word of God is so accurate and in real time. Let me encourage you, my friends. Despite the growing evidence of increasing lawlessness and evil on every hand, Jesus, our victorious Lord, is coming back. Amen. And if we are preparing to meet him when he comes, let us pray. Let us pray earnestly that he finds us faithful. Verse 13 tells us that he who endures to the end, the same shall be saved. In today's message, we find that our two disciple friends showed firsthand what it means to endure to the end. They lived for and they preached about the Lord of glory. Even and until the midnight hour, they could do no less than to worship the God of glory. And then just like the song says, the shackles fell off their feet so they could dance. They could dance as they celebrated the conversion of the jail keeper and his entire family. They could dance because they were victorious in elevating the light of the glory of God in a prison cell. That's what worship to our God can do. This lesson is teaching us that even in the midnight hour, our praise is still powerful enough to lift up our Christ so that he will draw all souls unto him. We may feel that we can't sing and that, the, uh, that not only the gifted should sing. We may feel that, 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 that our voice is not good enough, but you know what? It's time to stop listening to the lies of the enemy and praise God with every breath that is within you. Yes. Your worship, Amen. your praise, and even your meditation creates an atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to reside and for the enemy to take a hike. Be very intentional about your praise because somebody is watching you and is being inspired by the light that is shining through you. Yes. That someone mm -hmm. is a jail keeper. That someone is a jail keeper who is guarding helplessness. They are guarding loss. They are guarding despair. They are guarding sickness, but they are desiring to leave that life behind and come over and experience new life in Christ, the life that you are experiencing as a witness to the goodness of God in your life. I dare say, my friends, it is almost midnight. Not only is it evident that we are living in the last days, but it is evident that there is a shaking going on. The people of God should be rejoicing that the coming of the Lord is nearer than it has ever been. And yet while we wait, let us continue to be found diligent that our work is not in vain. Let us stay connected to the master and he will stay connected to us. We need to let our actions, we need to let our thoughts, we need to let our motives be so intertwined with the Father so that when the trials come to try to shake our faith, we will be found worshiping and praising and singing to God and encouraging each other, even in the midnight. Because even in the midnight hour, God's power is still sufficient to use our suffering and our stripes to save others who are in desperate need of a savior. Yeah. Amen. This is probably Romans 8, 28 at its best, that all things are working together for good. My first appeal is to those who have never given their heart to Jesus. I want to encourage you that in this moment, that you take advantage 
of this moment while the breath is still in your body and just try Jesus. Because when you invite Jesus into your heart, you will begin to experience life like you never have before. And not only that, but when you choose Christ, your destination is secure, eternal life in him. And just bear in mind that if you were the only sinner, Jesus still would have left his throne and come to earth to save you. Oh, what great love he has for you. I encourage you, if you are making that decision right now, reach out to someone in this congregation, reach out to the pastor, and they will gladly encourage you and excitedly walk you through how to become lost in the love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. My second appeal is to the rest of us, I want to encourage you, my brothers and my sisters, we are going through some very turbulent and challenging times, but don't lose your praise. Every moment of every hour, allow Christ to be the meditation of your heart with his praises on your lips and his life in your actions. Every moment he is shining out from you. The only thing to keep us grounded in these challenging times is to stay anchored to the God, to the rock of our salvation. Mm. And that is my prayer and my determination for you this day. And I'd like to end with the words of the praise song that I thought was so in tune with the message to take the name of Jesus with you child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it then wherever you go. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we are grateful, Savior. We are grateful to you this day for the Holy Spirit that has spoken to each one of us you have encouraged us. You have blessed us. You have strengthened us according to our needs. Father God, I pray in this moment that shackles will be broken, that illnesses will flee, that despair will take a hike because God, everything that we need is found in you, our savior. So bless us right now. Bless your waiting congregation. Bless us as we go through the coming week to do just as you've instructed us today, to keep a praise on our lips and joy in our hearts. No matter what we may go through, we, mo we know that all things are working together for the good of those who love God. We wanna see you when you come. We know that you will save us as we praise you, as we worship you, as we lift you up, as we magnify you, as we bless you now and forever. In Jesus' name, we humbly pray. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise God. I just want to really say it was a blessing to have you, Elder Harris. It was such a privilege to be with you again. Amen. Though separated by distance, but truly we're saying when you make your way back to your country, hallelujah, not because you need to be in the flesh in the pulpit, hallelujah, and, hallelujah, and, praise God. And I really appreciate that the shackles fall off their feet so that they can dance, hallelujah, <laughs> antidote to shackles falling out, praise God. Praise I want to thank him and I pray that God will continue to bless you, bless Hallelujah. you and your family. And I tr truly appreciate you getting up six hours ahead of time because there's six hours. If you don't know family, there's six hours, there's six hours behind us. 
So it's really early in the morning right now to Amen. have that. Thank you, sis. I just want oh, to love you. God. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise glory the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Yeah.